I woke up what felt like an eternity later in a hospital bed, feeling high off my eyeballs on painkillers. Nothing ached anymore, nothing even tingled. Compared to the ball of pain I'd been in when I was in the tank, this was heaven. The room was small, with four white walls and a machine that beeped every time my heart thumped in my chest. The sun shone through a window on my right, just peeking through the clouds. I must have been out all night. Regardless, I was glad just to be alive. Then, everything that had transpired in the past 24 hours came rushing back to me. Disturbing images of a gigantic insect munching on me with jagged teeth flashed through my mind, its wiry legs sliding over my limbs. I tried to shake the thought from my head, blinking my eyes a couple of times to bring back the present. That was when I noticed the person slumped over on the chair next to me. Her head was resting on her shoulder, her whole body leaning to the left. Strands of her red hair were hanging over her face while a pile of comic books lay on her lap. The smile crept across my face. She really was determined not to leave me again. Hey, I croaked. My dry throat mangled the words as it came out of my mouth. Emily stirred but didn't wake up. I swallowed, trying to work up the saliva to speak clearly. Hey! Emily's eyes jerked open. She blinked a few times before looking up to see that I was staring back at her. Ty! She raced to my side, completely forgetting about the comic books on her lap, which spilled all over the place. I, th I, th I thought you'd never wake up, Emily said, putting her hand on my cheek. How are you feeling? Honestly? I feel amazing. But I think it's the morphine, or whatever they gave me. Yeah. Well, you took a fucking beating last night. I'm getting survivor's guilt just thinking about it. You should see the other guy. Emily's face softened. A look of affection spreading across her. My heart beginning to flutter in my chest, causing the ECG machine to make a series of oddly timed beeps. Look, I'm not good at saying sappy shit. You know that, Emily said, lowering her eyes as her cheek began to glow pink. But, I asked expectantly. Emily rolled her eyes, punching me softly in the arm. But I want to, for you. So here goes. She took my hand in hers, exhaled slowly, and looked me right in the eye as she spoke. I know I'm someone who always gets herself, and others, into dangerous situations, but for as long as I can remember, you've always been the one who's protected me during them. Even at school, when the other kids would talk shit to me because I used to dress like a punk, you always stood up for me. I never had to ask you to do that. I always looked up to you, she said, giving my hand a squeeze. Emily bit her lip, briefly pausing to whip her short hair behind her ear. Then, when we first went to the tank, you still protected me. Even if it was super obvious that I was being completely reckless by pushing you guys to go in there. After Jeremy died, I called you to tell you how I felt that my dumbass parents wouldn't even let me talk to you. She hung her head, eyes staring down at the bedsheets. Then we moved away, and I spent ten years not knowing if I was ever going to see you again. Missing you every day. And then I came back here. And you actually still wanted to be my friend, after everything that happened with Jeremy. Not only that, but you almost got killed protecting me. Emily paused for a moment. And thank God for that. I didn't know if my heart could take any more. Look, Em. She held a finger in my lips, flashing me a serious look. I'm not done. Okay. Okay, okay. I said, holding my free hand up in defense. She took a deep breath and continued. But it's not just that. You always know how to make me laugh, but in a way that doesn't make me want to smash your brains in. You're sweet. Caring. And you're pretty cute despite being a dork. I guess what I'm saying is... Before I could respond, Emily leaned in and kissed me. Time stopped for a moment as Emily invaded all of my senses, 
her soothing palm on my cheek, the smell of her fruity perfume, and the minty freshness of her breath was all I could taste. Her soft lips felt amazing as they pressed up against mine, sending a warm, fuzzy feeling cascading over my face. It felt like the kiss would never end. But she finally relented to come up for air. I opened my eyes to see her looking back at me. Eyes seemed to glow as she smiled at me. I love you, Tyler. Relief flooded through me, my heart leaping with joy. There was so much I wanted to say. I wanted my own monologue. I wanted to tell her everything I loved about her. How she was so brave, inspiring, determined, smart, and resourceful. How she refused to give up. Had a heart of gold under a seemingly cold exterior. It was super cute on top of all that. But I knew I could sum all that up in four words. I love you too. Emily's face cracked into a wide grin. The happiest I think I'd ever seen her. Now that all that was out of the way, I couldn't help myself. I wanted to kiss her again. I leaned in slowly. Emily followed my lead, but the moment was interrupted by the sound of the door into the room swinging open. I opened my eyes to see an older woman wearing a white coat leering at us with a disapproving look in her eyes. You can get your jollies off later. Right now you need to rest. Three broken ribs, a badly infected wound on my leg that required a dozen stitches to close, a minor concussion, and a heap of cuts and bruises. That was the official write-up by the hospital. Luckily I had insurance, so I was able to stay in a relatively decent room while I was being nursed back to health. The pain meds kept me from struggling too much, although my breathing continued to be slightly impaired due to the aforementioned broken ribs. I had a number of visitors during my stay in the hospital. The most regular being Emily, who came in just about every day to see me. Having her by my side was what made the stay seem to fly by, as each day she would bring me something to read or watch, I even snuck in a few snuggles when the staff wasn't around. Emily also filled me in on what happened after I had passed out in the tank. The guard and her had managed to get me out with the assistance of the other security personnel. During the rescue, she told them everything that had happened, from our first visit to the tank to our last. Having literally witnessed a zombie lady disappear in front of his eyes, he was more inclined to believe our story, even backing her up in front of his colleagues who were in disbelief. In exchange for the guards not reporting our breaking and entering to the police, Emily agreed to pay for the repairs to the tank's hatch. But Emily wasn't the only visitor I received during my stay. It was late on a Wednesday afternoon. I'd been in the hospital for two weeks and begun to feel a lot better. Breathing was easier, my chest didn't hurt as much and I was beginning to walk around on clutches without much difficulty. Emily had popped out to go to the shops when Special Agent Garrison confidently strode into the room. Tyler Schwartz, he said, looking me up and down through his signature black sunglasses. I immediately sat up on my bed, stunned by his sudden arrival. Uh, Agent Garrison, you look like you've seen better days, he remarked. I swallowed, unsure of how to respond. Uh, yeah... Things are getting better, though. He nodded. We sat in silence for a few moments. I wondered if he knew what had happened. Surely he did, if he was here. The rumor around town is that you and Emily DeStoro were at the water tank on the edge of town two weeks ago, Garrison said. Well, you know, people say a lot of things, I said, trying not to show that I was freaking out inside. Relax, I'm not here to arrest you. I exhaled, not realizing I'd been holding my breath. If everything I heard from that security guard is correct, you're trying to help the person who took the life of your best friend, Jeremy Williams, Garrison said, taking a seat next to me. You might not know this, but I've lost a number of good colleagues during my time with the FBI. Some I would go as far as to describe as my friends. I know what it's like to lose a friend. And to tell you the truth, I was... Secretly rooting for you, Tyler. I believe there's forces in this world more powerful than we can imagine, both positive and negative. He paused for a moment, and I waited in anticipation for him to continue. From what I understand, there is an evil here in Parsky. I believe you've cleansed part of it, but I don't believe it's fully disappeared yet. 
I'm willing to commit myself to finding out what's going on in this town. And I just wanted to thank you for inspiring me to do so. I was taken aback by this. I had always regarded Garrison as the most understanding cop that I'd ever spoken to during the entire tank saga, but I had no idea he believed in the supernatural. Regardless, it was good to have him on my side. He'd very deliberately told us last time that if we interfered in his investigation again, he'd have no choice but to arrest us. What was more intriguing was what he said about Parsky. Did this mean that Margaret was only the beginning of the darkness that existed in this town? Were there more demons and zombies yet to be unearthed? Wait, you think there's there's more evil in Parsky? Do you know where to find it? I asked. Garrison patted me on the shoulder before standing up and moving to the foot of my bed. I have an idea. A week later, I was out of the hospital. My ribs having fully healed, I could now confidently walk around on crutches, and the wound in my leg had disappeared. A round scar replaced it. Having only booked a week at the hotel I was staying at, I had nowhere to go. But thankfully, Emily talked her uncle into letting me crash at his for a little while. While I was there, Emily and I talked about our future, given the fact that it was now time for each other to return to different cities and continue our lives. In the end, we decided that we'd give Long Distance a shot. I know the odds of it working out weren't great, but I was prepared to put the effort in because Emily was certainly worth it. Emily only had one year left in her degree, so she promised once she finished, she would move to Missouri to look for work and be with me. I told her that she didn't have to sacrifice so much, but she put her foot down on the matter, and I'm not one to challenge her when she's that determined. On our last day in Parsky, I joked that we should go back to the tank, light it on fire, burn that godforsaken thing to the ground. Well, we can't do that, but we could light the sky on fire, she responded digging around in her bedside table to produce the bag of fireworks she'd bought way back when. I can't believe you still have those. Wouldn't let such a high-quality firework go to waste. So, where do you want to go? That night, Emily drove us up to the top of Ellendale Hill, named after a famous settler who passed through Parsky on their way to establishing a settlement nearby. We bought some beer, snacks, and of course the fireworks. From the top of the hill, we could see the lights of the city, twinkling in the distance, as well as the water tank looming over the town. Cheers, we said in unison, clinking our bottles together. I took a swig of the bitter brew. It had been a while since I'd had any alcohol, but then right now, this cold beer tasted better than it ever had. I looked over to see that Emily was staring at me, goofy look on her face. What? I asked. Oh, nothing. Just like looking at your dumb face. Guess you're lucky I put up with your abuse then. Oh, poor you. Here, let me make it up to you. We kissed, our warm bodies pressed together in the cold night. Okay. Now, if that wasn't enough, let me light up the sky in appreciation for you, Emily said, crawling over to the fireworks display that she had set up earlier. There was still one thing nagging me that I wanted to mention before she did. Because it's not like it was something I could mention when fireworks were going off. Hey, wait. Before you do, I said, putting my arm on hers. Emily whipped her head back to me, green eyes shining in the night. What? I just want you to do one thing for me. Come on, I already told you. I'm not doing that because I'm not that kind of girl, she protested. I rolled my eyes. Suppressing the inner urge to laugh. No, not that, you idiot. Emily sighed. Fine, what is it? I want you to forgive yourself for everything that happened. With Jeremy. That appeared to catch Emily off guard. As she was rendered speechless with no quickfire retort to be heard. I know you still blame yourself for what happened because it was your idea... And you encouraged us to join you, I explained, squeezing her arm. I just wanted to say I don't blame you, and I never have. We made a decision to go there together, just like you and I did this time. You need to let go of that belief that you're responsible. Emily sighed, 
running her hand through her hair. But I was... No buts. I want you to promise me, I said. This time it was Emily's turn to roll her eyes. Ugh, fine, you got me. I just miss him so much. So do I. But I don't blame myself for his death. Okay. Say it. I... I don't blame myself. Promise? Emily nodded. For Jeremy? I promise. Good. Now can I get on with this? <laughs> Take a lot of effort to set this up, you know. Go for it. So we sat. And watched the sky turn into a shower of color and light. Emily's head resting on my shoulder. And my arms wrapped around her. And for a brief moment... I swear I saw a spirit floating above the tank. Dancing from one spark... To the next. His face looking very, very familiar. Hey there, kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I wanted to tell you all thank you so much for listening to tonight's story. Or watching tonight's story if you're on YouTube. If you're not on YouTube, that means you're probably on the podcast that's available on iTunes, on the Google Play Store, and is now actually available on Spotify and doesn't use as much data. So, hey, that's a thing. If you guys aren't listening on YouTube or Spotify, then I have no idea how else you could have found me. Unless you found one of those books on Amazon. You know, the Creepypasta Collection, Volume 1, Volume 2. Those are things, too. Oh, well. I don't know how you would have heard me there, seeing as this was recorded, like, two years after those came out. Uh. Well, anyway. Thanks for listening, folks. And sweet dreams.